So I've just got back from a ride. It's hot, which at the moment means about 40 degrees. I'm very thirsty. And it's 4.28, which is an, a, a respectable time for a beer. So I thought that whilst I have a beer, I'll talk a little bit about my latest, uh, well, it's not my newest bike. In fact, it's one of my oldest bikes, but it's been given a new lease of life. And I've done that by fitting it with flat bars, or more precisely, old bars. What, I hear you ask, are old bars? Well, it's alternative bars, because they're not really flat, and they're not straight. They sweep up, they sweep back, and actually they sweep forward a bit as well, and I'll show you that uh, presently. Now, it just so happened that uh, I've got a pair of Ritchie Coyote bars kicking around, left over from when I built my Scrambler. They were suitable bars for the Scrambler, but I had seen the Tumbleweed Persuader bars and by Joe, that's a beautiful handlebar. If a handlebar can be beautiful, a Tumbleweed Persuader is. It's, it's raw steel that's been lacquered. Oh, it's just beautiful. Anyway, so it's a little bit like, you know, you really want an Omega. You don't need an Omega. Your phone tells you what the time is, but an Omega is nice to have. And that's what the tumbleweed persuaders are like. So I got a pair for my Scrambler bike. That's a great bike, really love it. And I'm gonna to talk to you about that another day. So I got these bars kicking around and I put them on. And the interesting thing is, because of the shape of them, and putting by just adding a longer stem, the reach was absolutely fine. Usually you put a flat straight bar on a drop bar bike and the reach becomes too short. I'll show you in a minute. Right, so here it is. It's a, a Kinesis ATR V1. Titanium frame. It's from, I think, 2012. And I've actually been very happy with this bike. But the reason we're talking about it is because of these handlebars. These are the Ritchie Coyote handlebars. And what I was talking about is this, this forward bend. So we come out from the stem and instead of straight, it goes forward. The bars also sweep back here by 27 degrees, which gives a, a really comfortable angle for the wrists to be at. You'll also see that I've put these on. These are simply some old bar ends from a, from a mountain bike I used to have. This mimics uh, riding on the hoods with dropped handlebars. And then obviously I've wrapped them in uh, handlebar tape. So what I was talking about, uh, about the reach, if, I, if, we, if we look at my other, Kinesis ATR V2 with the drop bars, you'll see that the the dropped handlebars bring the hood forward from where they join the stem. From the middle where your hands is, the middle of your hands is going to be to the handlebars 100 mil forward. So if you had a, a handlebar that comes directly back, effectively the, the, the length of the bike is going to be 100 mil less. I, I hope you've got me there. But the way that this handlebar sweeps forward, that takes up a good deal of that lost length. And then by adding a 110 mil stem rather than the 80 mil stem, I was able to actually get the length from the pseudo hood to the back of the saddle. Let's go from the center where the center of your hand would be. That's 920 millimeters approximately. Whereas on the curly bar bike, it's 925 millimeters. When we compare to the drop bars as well with the pseudo bar ends here, um, just to give you an idea, we've looked at the reach, but the width I've got on these uh, is 400 millimeters center to center. And then if we go over here, we're looking at 440. But what you've actually got here is a much wider handlebar. This is 800 millimeters end to end. Yeah, right, so what we got then, we've got the pseudo hoods, nice comfortable cruising position. Uh, you can stretch out more, you stretch your back a bit more. Uh, you're gonna get out of the wind a little bit more. This isn't a big deal for me. I, I don't cruise on a flat any more than 30 kilometers an hour so it's not that it's not that it's a big deal for me but i do find it comfortable leaning forward and stretching the back but then if i want to sit up i can sit up i can come back i can get onto the onto the sweat back bars 
from a more upright position. I find that if I sit in a comfortable chair, I want to move around and what I find these handlebars are allowing me to do is move around. When you're on the pseudo hoods and you want to change gear, of course you need to move your hand with these Shimano triggers to go into a higher gear, you can pull. If I'm on the grips, I'll push to go into a lower gear. But if I'm coming from the pseudo hoods, I find I can give a quick pull and go back. If I need to go into a lower gear, I can give a quick push and go back. Clearly, it's not as quick as changing gear on drop bar bikes, but I don't think that I've got much of a chance of winning the Giro Italia or any other race. Of course, on these pseudo hoods, you cannot brake, so you're gonna have to come back onto the bars to use the brakes. Another undeniable and I think undisputable advantage of the alt bars over the drop bars is luggage. Here's my, uh, here's my rather splendid made in Bangkok buffalo bag, which I've used on a few journeys this year. And as you can see, it's just simply not going to go on there, is it? But if we go over to the alt bar bike, and I'm only going to, I'm not going to, put this on properly i'm just going to quickly put it on to demonstrate but there you go it's on no problems whatsoever so what are the advantages then of having the alt bars on a gravel bike well first of all we've already looked at the luggage carrying capacity of the alt bars there's absolutely no doubt that you can put more luggage on the alt bars than you can on the drop bars gear ratios now the amount that i've played about over the years trying to get sensible gear ratios with dropped handlebars oh what a kerfuffle it's actually really pretty easy now it's quite nice at last they've got over this obsession that gears are for boasting about when you've shaved your legs and you're sitting in a cafe in surrey rather than actually trying to get on and ride up a hill so now, yeah, you can get some pretty sensible gear ratios on a drop bar bike. Having said that, the, the scope that's available with the, with the alt bars, um, with a mountain bike trigger and a mountain bike derailleur, it's tremendous. It's so easy. There's so much available. Sunrace cassettes, they make a variety. But um, the Shimano's own variety, they've got now they've got an 11 speed, uh, 11 to 51 cassette. They've got 12 speed, 10 to 51. They're also doing, I believe, a 10 to 46. Uh, the price of components with the with flat bar stuff is much better. And of course, the convenience of packing. Uh, one of the things that led me to do this to, to my gravel bike is the one that I'm going to be using mostly when I'm leading tours. Um, and I, I've got a couple of different bags that I use when I'm flying to different places to lead tours, and they both pack the bike down nice and compact. But with these flat mountain bike bars, it's so easy. You, you've got two screws for the two brake levers. You've got a screw for the gear change. And on the grips I've got here, I've got a screw on each of the grips. Undo those five screws, you can slide everything off the handlebars. Two screws on the stem, the handlebars are off. They're just off and you can drop them in the bottom of the bag. You can put them anywhere. Everything is removed then. And it just makes it so much quicker and easier to pack. And there's less risk of things being damaged. The triggers are not going to get damaged. The brakes are not going to get damaged when they're not attached to the handlebars. I think it's, it's quite an advantage if you fly a lot with your bicycle, which I guess most people don't. So I hope you found this video vaguely entertaining and I hope you found it a bit interesting. And if you did enjoy it, if you did find it useful, if you could give it a thumbs up down below, please. If you do like traveling on your bicycle, if you're interested in joining an organized uh, tour, in Asia, please go to paintedroads.com and have a look at what we offer. For better or worse, I'm on every tour. I work in conjunction with a very experienced uh, agent 
who in, in every country in which I work, that agent is generally my friend and is generally the guide as well on the tour. I kind of ta just tag along because I like it. We have usually six to 12 people in a group, no more than 12, and we only run eight to 10 tours a year. I'm looking forward to this virus being gone and we can get back on the road. So, hey, do check us out. Okay, jury open.